Now, all week, we're going to be exploring different aspects of LPG storage and the plans for Crestwood's Watkins Glen facility. And in part one, we're looking at the project, how it's changed in response to community feedback. I traveled to Kansas City, Missouri to talk directly to Crestwood executives about the project in an exclusive interview with WENY. The company outlines the proposal, reacts to the community's response, and tells us why the project's now almost a decade in the works. This is a look from inside the main gates of the Savona storage site near Bath, owned and operated by Crestwood Midstream Partners. The company allowed WENY into their facilities for a private tour. Crestwood says this operation proves it can safely operate propane gas storage facilities similar to a proposed operation near Seneca Lake, which is drawing fire from critics. We're in Kansas City, Missouri at Crestwood's offices. We're talking with company officials about the proposed LPG project. They tell us it's safe and beneficial for the community. And most people didn't know that there's a facility across the street that's existed for decades or that there was a, you know, propane stored in this location for decades. Crestwood Midstream Chief Marketing Officer Bill Goutreau says this location on Seneca Lake is ideal for storing LPG for several reasons. Underground salt caverns are commonly used in areas across the country for hydrocarbon storage. For one thing, the strength, okay, so, so literally these salt caverns, which in this case are a half a mile, you know, deep, you know, so, so way down, um, you know, they, they, they're often compared to structural steel in terms of their strength capability. Watkins Glen is already the site of an existing propane pipeline originating out of Texas and making its way into the Northeast. And it's this location, situated near other Northeastern states, not suitable for propane storage, but in need of propane for home heating. So it's a combination of those things, where the formations are, where the pipeline is, and where the market-based need is. The company says the caverns are subject to strict testing to ensure they're suitable for storage under constant real-time monitoring and mandated regular testing. Very rigorous testing and it's all sonar related. It's a well integrity test um, that's both sonar and pressure related. And you know th these caverns by their nature, they're, as, as they sit here today, they're filled, they're filled with brine and under pressure. They're working every day by, by virtue of that, you know, and, and that can be easily verified and tested. If approved, the LPG storage cavern would hold up to 1.5 million barrels of propane. The company already maintains LPG storage along with natural gas and butane in nearby Savona in Steuben County. It's because of this existing operation, along with community feedback, that Crestwood modified its Watkins Glen plans in 2016. Initial plans to store butane, build a rail car siding, along with trucks hauling the gases in and out of the facility were removed from the application. And because we have this additional facility in Savona, we felt like we could work the logistics so that really there wouldn't need to be you know, much or any rail or truck, because that seemed to be something that the community was concerned about. Opponents say the storage is too close to Seneca Lake and could threaten the area's booming wine and tourism region and hurt a natural resource, the lake. They feel the risk is too great. There are safer places to put this. There are more desirable places to put this. Uh, one company's profits should not be decided for over a whole region's way of life. It threatens our way of life. That's why we're concerned. You wouldn't hear us say, let's downplay the risk, because that risk is there even though there's very fundamental differences between the facilities and the type of products being stored and everything else. But if you want to focus on the risk, then we'd say that's a good thing. We're worried about the risk, too, and want to make sure we do everything we can to mitigate it. Crestwood says when opposition groups started to form and grow more vocal, it caught them off guard. We went into the community because we were kind of welcomed with open arms and the idea of growing jobs and spending to grow the tax base and everything else. And so um, U.S. Salt had a good relationship with the community, you know, the local storage facility 30 miles away. Um, I think we were struggling to understand, well, how do you, how do you respond to those concerns? Because if, you, if they weren't always factual or you didn't understand where they were coming from, it's kind of hard to craft a response. 
Opponents voiced their concerns about the potential risks of storing gases underground so close to a source of water. Not to mention a multi-billion dollar tourism industry and families making their living off nearby farms and vineyards. Crestwood says public safety is a top company priority and they hear those concerns. We don't just have this safety criteria uh, solely to be good neighbors. We also have it because it makes economic sense. And, um, and so I would tell you that, look, we're big supporters of Seneca Lake. We've, our U.S. salt business, is, that, that plan has been there for over 100 years. Um, our, our employees live in that community. Um, every, you know, everybody covets what's going on there with tourism and vineyards, you know, in the lake itself. And, um, we're, you know, we, we're actually working to make those things better. Despite being eight plus years removed from the initial application, modifications to the proposal and over a hundred million dollars spent, Brad Bacon says Crestwood wants to be a good community neighbor. The company says it's made investments into local groups and organizations, improved its U.S. salt facility, and works directly with local emergency responders so they're prepared in the event of any type of incident. We are a business owner, you know, just like every business owner that lives there. We have 150 plus employees that live there, are part of the community. You know, safety is front and center on our mind. You know, we are an energy company at the end of the day. So, Renata, as of right now, where does this project stand? You know, a lot of people have that question. Crestwood has that question. A lot mm. of the oppositional groups have that question. There was an issues conference in February of 2015 where an administrative law judge for the DEC in the state of New York heard arguments and comments about issues being brought up over a two-day period. The judge, since then, is reviewing those comments, and then he decides if the permitting can go forward, the project gets the green light, or if there needs to be further adjudication. Now, like I said, there is no timeline for him to make a decision on that process. And so here we are over two mm -hmm. years out now with no uh, word on if one is coming or when. So in the meantime, both the company and the people who don't want this to move forward, all they can do is really wait for a decision from that judge. We're continuing our Seneca Lake Showdown series this evening, exploring Crestwood Midstream's plans to store LPG underground in salt caverns near Seneca Lake. Our Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer is digging into the story from our nation's capital. She spoke with national organizations who are standing by Crestwood's proposal and in other organizations who is encouraging state and local governments to stop it. We've been hoping that the facility would be approved for many years. Phil Square is rooting for the proposed liquid gas storage facility on Seneca Lake. He works with the National Propane Gas Association in Washington, D.C., representing the U.S. propane industry nationwide. He says having the storage in New York State is one way propane providers can better serve their customers. New York is actually the number three residential propane demand state in the country and the number seven overall propane demand state in the country. So the need to have available and accessible propane storage in the state is very important for consumers. Crestwood Midstream's proposal would store liquid propane gas in an underground salt cavern in Watkins Glen. The project has been in limbo since a DEC issues conference with an administrative law judge in 2015 stemming from mounting opposition. But Square says he isn't seeing the danger and the placement of this project on the western shores of Seneca Lake just makes sense. There's been existing storage at that site for decades and it seems logical that you would take an existing storage facility and expand it rather than try to break new ground elsewhere. It's also very close to existing pipeline infrastructure and it's right in the middle of a huge demand area. But another group in Washington calls Crestwood's plan irresponsible. Winona Hodder, executive director at the Food and Water Watch, says storing pressurized gas in the salt caverns is unstable. We are hopeful that the Cuomo administration will not finalize the permitting to allow it to go forward. Winona Hodder, executive director at the Food and Water Watch, says she's seen what she calls an extreme friendliness towards the fossil fuel industry here in Washington, with the ushering in of the Trump administration. This is a big one. In the past four months, President Trump has signed a series of executive orders dramatically curbing the United States climate policy. 
She says with the direction the United States energy policy is moving in, it's going to be up to the state and local levels to advocate for their communities. Her organization is launching a new campaign called Off Fossil Fuels to obstruct fossil fuel plants across the country. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take this kind of political action all over the country to really stop dangerous projects like Seneca Lake to protect our global climate. While some wait for a change in the energy conversation here in Washington, the National Propane Gas Association says they remain hopeful they'll see some progress in the next year in moving the LPG project forward. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer, WENY News. Now tomorrow on Seneca Lake Showdown, we're talking with local supporters and opposition to the project, and we'll hear from Schuyler County lawmakers who voted in favor of the proposal and why they feel it's safe. And we'll also hear from two different groups who are fiercely opposed to the storage plant and why they believe it's a threat to our environment and the area's successful tourism and wine industry. And you can find additional links along with all of our reports so far and more information on our website. Just head to WENY.com slash Seneca Lake Showdown. Continuing our coverage of the proposed LPG gas storage in Seneca Lake, we examined support and opposition forces locally. WENY's Isabel Garcia spoke with both sides about their specific concerns and joins us now in the studio with more about those concerns tonight. Isabel. Nick, Renata, back in August, the Schuyler County Legislature renewed its support for the project after Crestwood scaled back proposed operations for their Watkins Glen facility. Opposition groups say the changes do not fully address their concerns. After Crestwood Midstream took some items, including butane storage and rail and truck transport off the table, the Schuyler County Legislature renewed its support for the project in a 6-2 to two vote. Because of those uh, mitigation measures, we reiterated our support for the project and urged the state to proceed with, uh, with the permitting and approval of the project. William Olin of the Finger Lakes Wine Business Coalition, which is comprised of local and regional businesses, remains opposed to the project, saying by Crestwood scaling back the proposal, it reflects a poor project concept altogether. Crestwood made application to the DEC to, to scale down the project, which really, in my mind, reinforces that our concerns were correct all along. There were a lot of inappropriate parts to the plan in the first place. In an exclusive interview with WENY, Crestwood executives say that move to reduce the scope of the project was a result of community concern and feedback. But in the scheme of the level of concern that was out there and, and really just to kind of prove the point that we had been saying that we, we didn't expect a lot of rail and truck traffic, we just decided to take it completely off the table. Schuyler County Legislature Chair Dennis Fagan says while he finds concerns surrounding butane justifiable, others are not. Concerns associated with uh, um, the structural integrity of the caverns, associated with water quality, um, they've been readily dismissed by the, uh, by the Department of Environmental Conservation in two major uh, reports. Those reports are the foundation as to why the majority of the legislature continues to support the project. They're the experts. They oversee the permitting of these storage facilities and uh, they have the expertise to evaluate the uh, uh, the safety and uh, the feasibility of what was being proposed. Gas Free Seneca is one of the largest community-based groups opposed to the project. Organization leaders explain why they feel those reports are not sufficient. What are the concerns that you still have if uh, you know the Department of Environmental Conservation is uh, giving the okay? It's a great question and it's one that they often uh, try to use as an, a reason for supporting the project. Um, you have to understand that this is simply the Department of the Division of Mineral Resources, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the DEC. The Division of Mineral Resources role is to help support corporations coming in to develop resources. The administrative law judge has been looking at material that we submitted um, through various experts including uh, independent PhD geologists mm -hmm. that say that these caverns um, are not safe for storing anything. 
Another reason the county gives for supporting the project is due to the fact that Crestwood owns U.S. Salt, making it the largest private company taxpayer. I'm afraid that it's possible that the salt company could close. And although they haven't said that, and I, but I'm, I'm concerned that if that possibility exists, um, it would have a significant detrimental effect on the economy of our county. We posed that concern to Crestwood Vice President Brad Bacon, who says the company wants to grow more local jobs through the LPG expansion and closing U.S. salt doesn't make sense. If you can't use it to uh, achieve some of the growth projects, do you want to own U.S. salt? I don't think it ever says, well, if you can't do this growth project, you start laying off mass amounts of people. You know, that's not good for um, our business, it's not good for the company, it's not good for the community or employees or anything else. And so that negative blowback is a, you know, makes that one a little unrealistic. Yvonne Taylor of Gas Free Seneca adds that if the legislature is concerned about the economy, stopping the project would be more helpful for future business. That will be the economic boom that the county needs and yeah. the Finger Lakes need. Exactly. Is, you know, there are so many investors that are holding off right now, waiting for Governor Cuomo to, to reject this project outright. And unless and until he does that, um, you know, there, there, there's an influx of funds that's, you know, not coming into this region. County Administrator Tim O'Hearn counters that by saying the proposed project and tourism industry are not mutually exclusive. I don't think you can lump the two together. Uh, number one, we live in the most beautiful area in the world, uh, and that will continue. The, this project uh, moving forward, if it were permitted today, would result in no noticeable difference to uh, residents or tourists alike. At this point, the back and forth has been going on for such a long time, Fagan is not convinced a conclusion is near. Quite frankly, I don't expect any action by the state this year at all. I'd be very surprised if anything happens. Really? Why is that? Can you expand on that? Because it's political. They don't want to make a decision. Crestwood VP Brad Bacon says the company wishes there was more transparency from the state in this process, and it's frustrating a decision hadn't been made one way or the other, but there are many factors at play. I think this project in particular got caught up in a couple of different things, and unfortunately the timing has really worked against us. Um, I don't know when that timing changes, but you know it's kind of where we are today. At this point, both sides can agree they want some sort of final conclusion to this ongoing proposal to come sooner rather than later. And you can find additional links, all of our reports so far, and more information on this story on our website. Just head to WENY.com slash Seneca Lake Showdown. Reporting in the studio, Isabel Garcia, WENY News. We went to the Midwest to take a closer look at a community that was put on edge after an underground gas storage tragedy. With salt cavern storage, you have pros and cons, but for the city of Hutchinson, in Kansas. They know the negatives all too well because their city suffered a series of explosions of geysers that suddenly just popped up. In my story, I traveled there and spoke to the people that witnessed it firsthand. Hutchinson, Kansas. Population just a tad over 42,000 people. Home of the state high school football champions, the Salt Hawks, and to some things out of this world. We exhibit uh, one of the largest collections of space artifacts anywhere in the world. Probably the, the key or the anchor piece is the Apollo 13 Command Module Odyssey, uh, the actual spacecraft that the movie was based on. We also have a moon rock uh, from Apollo 11. Hutchinson also has a more earthly attraction. The Stratic Assault Museum. It's the only salt mine in the country that allows people to take tours. Watch your step coming off there. Inside, the mine is sort of like a time capsule that always maintains a constant 68 degrees. Here you can see old dynamite boxes left behind by mine workers in the 1950s. It's now preserved for hundreds of years to come. This tour is not for the claustrophobic. Above us is uh, about 200 feet of salt, um, about another 250 feet of shale and gypsum. 
about 100 feet of water bearing sand and the surface. The jobs here mostly rely on the salt, agriculture, or medical industry, and the yearly Kansas State Fair. The city is the seat of Reno County and is much smaller than nearby Wichita. That's where we found Bill Wilson, a former Hutchinson News reporter who's now the managing editor at the Wichita Business Journal. Bill spoke to us about a day in Hutchinson he would never forget more than 16 years ago when he heard a nearby building explode. It was a very distinctive sound, that's the way I would describe it. Kind of a, you know, it wasn't a boom, it was more of a woomph, a loud magnified woomph sound, if that makes any sense. I heard that sound and immediately grabbed a pen, a pen jumped up and yelled gas explosion and went running for the door. As of 10.45 this morning, the skyline of Hutchinson changed drastically. An explosion blew apart the decor party supply and woody furniture building. I just kind of basically prayed to God that I'd get out of there and everybody would get out of there okay. She was one of the folks inside the building when it exploded. Amazingly, only two people were hurt, but neither of them seriously. At first, this explosion was thought to be a natural gas line eruption. But as first responders cut off the utilities, officials would find out soon enough that this was just the beginning into something much bigger. A few hours later, geysers started popping up across the city. Everybody was scared. They didn't know where the next explosion was going to happen. I mean, because they couldn't shut it off. And they thought it, it could be anywhere in town. You just don't know where. So it was like, should you be in hut? Should you leave town? I mean, a lot of scared people. The day after the first explosion on January 18th, another explosion happened a short distance away. This time it hit a mobile home park, killing two people. And now Hutchinson was on edge. Uh, many people, until we found out what the cause was, did not know what was going on. And um, the fear of doubt, the fear of the unknown was plentiful, and uh, we had to make sure that uh, we get to the bottom of the whole situation so we could begin our recovery efforts. Everybody was running helter-skelter trying to, to cover everything that was going on and then try to start figuring out where the fuel for this fire was coming from. Local gas engineers and former salt miners started talking with officials to help them pinpoint the cause. It took days for them really to discover what had happened. They uh, were drilling wells all around town and putting in um, pipes to bring gas to the surface and they were burning it off with flames. The answer to Hutchinson's problem was found right outside of the city limits. Now after a thorough investigation, the source of that explosion was linked back here to Yagi Field. This field is more than seven miles away from downtown Hutchinson. Bill Wilson broke the story after the first explosion. He also covered it extensively after. For two years, three years, until the case made it into the courts, basically. The court found, the legal process found, that um, too much gas had been put in Yagi Field, that particular cavern in Yagi Field that had a badly leaking supply pipe. It was also determined Hutchinson's past came back to haunt the city. Hutchinson has dozens of old abandoned brine wells that were put in back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and they're abandoned. And that's where the geysers was com were coming from. That's just got to be gas that's burning. In fact, the party decor building had a 700-foot well directly underneath it, but hidden by years of renovations and additions. This gave the escaping natural gas from Yagi Field a route to the surface and eventually into the building. This ho it was a hotel at that time and the hotel was famous for its salt baths. And there, there was an old brine well b right below the hotel. After the explosion, the building was torn down and turned into a parking lot. A small memorial now stands on the corner to serve as a reminder to Hutchinson. Looking back, Bill reflected on the story he spent long days and nights over. It was a case of 
good intentions, uninformed good intentions is what I would call it. The, the gas company, the state, were all trying to do the right thing. They just didn't understand what they were up against with the geology, with the necessity of pressurizing those caverns appropriately. It was a lot more delicate a process than anyone ever believed. It was a very difficult education for the area. So it is important to mention that the source of those explosions, Yagi Field, is still closed, but there is a proposal to reopen it. Also, there are several major differences between Hutchinson and the proposed project on Seneca Lake. For example, in Kansas, the explosion was caused by natural gas, whereas the Seneca Lake project involves LPG. Plus, regulations were much different 16 years ago. That's right, and I sat down with Crestwood Vi Vice President Brad Bacon. I specifically brought up the Hutchinson, Kansas incident. Now, they tell us this is comparing apples to oranges in terms of what happened. There are differences in the type of gas storage, differences in the types of caverns. They say the Seneca Lake proposal is completely different and would be much safer. It's just night and day difference, frankly, on uh, safety features and testing, whether it's SCADA in real time monitoring, everything that, you know, they overpressured the field is my understanding as well. And so you don't have a series of 16 pods the way that field was operated. You have one well and one cavern here at our site. And so there are fundamental differences. It's just hard to get into all of them. Another difference that Crestwood mentioned is the distance below the surface in Yagi. There was less than 1,000 feet below the surface where that nat natural gas was being stored, whereas Crestwood's LPG proposal would be more than 2,000 feet below the surface. Now, if you would like to see any of the other stories in our Seneca Lake Showdown series, along with additional materials and information, we've put it all in one place for you. Just head to our website, weny.com slash Seneca Lake Showdown. Tonight marks the fifth installment of our series looking at the Crestwood Midstream's proposal to store LPG in an underground salt cavern near Seneca Lake. And tonight, WNY's Kelly Meyer talks with our local representatives in Washington on how they feel about the project. One senator says the plan should not be approved, and a congressman says yes to bringing LPG in. A proposal that's been in the works for almost a decade. The storage of up to 1.5 million barrels of liquid petroleum gas in underground caverns beneath this property on Seneca Lake. While the battle is happening over 300 miles from Capitol Hill, lawmakers on both sides are getting involved. That part of the state is the heart of wine country. It's the heart of a lot of fruits and vegetables and production. New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand says she's concerned about storing LPG underground so close to the lake. Dozens of wineries, breweries and farms are located just offshore. She says she's heard personally from constituents in the southern tier worried about what completion could mean for local businesses and agriculture. We have industries, uh, tourism that really rely on clean water. And so to threaten the Finger Lakes by underground storage is a huge problem. And the citizens have spoken out. I've talked to a lot of residents in that community who think it's outrageous and they're not being heard. Legislation was brought to the floor in Congress last year after a natural gas explosion in an underground cavern in Kansas in 2001 killed two people. The bill sets out to improve the safety and regulation of underground natural gas storage facilities. It's since been signed into law. Gillibrand says it's an important step in protecting families across the country, especially in the southern tier. I think we in Congress can work together towards putting protections in place and creating uh, more incentives to listen to communities first and to let them decide what, what they're going to have in their communities. Congressman Tom Reed, whose district includes Schuyler County and parts of the Finger Lakes, says if the gases can be stored safely, the project should go forward. I think the, the right questions uh, are being asked uh, to make sure that we can do this safely and responsibly. Uh, but I've always come at this um, project from the perspective of a, of a yes, we can. Reed says he supports the storage project despite calls from some of his constituents about environmental concerns. However, Crestwood says its project meets all standards required by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation regarding safety and environmental standards. Opponents shared statistics from OpenSecrets.org that show the oil and gas industry donated more than $200,000 for Reed's election campaigns leading them to believe the donations influenced Reed's position on LPG. 
Reed tells WENY that's just not the case. It really doesn't, uh, in my opinion, uh, weigh how, how we come down uh, on the issues. Reed says he wants to ensure his constituents have an all of the above energy policy and that this storage is just a component of that. He says he's confident those in charge will address all of his constituents' concerns and find a clear solution. We need that resource. We need to have the uh, capacity uh, to have access to the gas. Um, but, you know, that's why we're going through the process. The state, uh, obviously, is now where the um, uh, review uh, is. And I, I, I just come at it from a yes we can type of attitude. As Reed was saying, the power is in the hands of the state. An administrative law judge in New York has been reviewing the project since an issues conference in early 2015. Meanwhile, lawmakers on the federal level continue to remain at odds on the issue. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer, WENY News. And now all week long, we've been exploring this project, the scope of the plan, the concerns of people in the community and hearing why supporters say the project is needed for the area. And throughout the week, you've been weighing in on a non-scientific poll on our website, WENY.com. We asked your thoughts on Crestwood's proposed LPG storage on Seneca Lake. And hundreds of you have weighed in so far, and we thank you for your response. And if you haven't voted and you would like to participate or even check out the other installments, head to our website, WENY.com slash Seneca Lake Showdown.